But please pay attention to this wealth of knowledge. Financial Wellness 2018, Mr. Perry Jeffrey. All right, cool. Woo, woo, woo. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Loud and clear? Super. Y'all don't want to miss this. So first of all, I just want to say um, thank you to The Walk. Thank you to Chad and uh, the rest of the experts in the room just for making this happen. This is just so, so powerful to have these many experts in the room sharing this information with the community. So I, this is, I need a little attention on this one because I have a question to ask. Who wants to be wealthy? Raise your hand. I do. I do. So I didn't see every hand go up, so maybe they didn't hear me in the back. Who wants to be wealthy? Raise your hand. I do. Outstanding. So my first question is, is how do you define wealth? Because you all raised your hand and said you wanted to be wealthy, correct? Yeah. How do you define it? When do you know that you went from being not wealthy to being wealthy? How do you measure that? Well, I'm going to share something that I learned. You measure wealth in time. And you may look like, well, this is brother crazy. What is he talking about? Well, look at your watch, look at your cell phone. That's how you measure wealth. If you were to stop doing whatever it is you're doing today that generates revenue and income, today was your last day at the job, work your business, how long, based on your time, would you be able to maintain your quality of life? Would that be 30 days? Would that be a, a year? I had somebody tell me one time, man, Perry, I'm waiting for the direct deposit right now. I got 24 hours, right? So if that's how we're gonna measure wealth, wealth is uh, uh, getting paid while you sleep, knowing that you have enough in either residual income or assets to cover all of your monthly bills and never have to punch a clock again. So uh, uh, one more time, who wants to be wealthy? Okay, I'll stand. So let me share this with you as well. Up until about five years ago, the leading indicator of wealth was legacy. More wealth in the United States was created from money being passed down generationally from grandparents and great grandparents and things of that nature. So there's a lot of individuals who have it, but it's not because they earned it. It's because somebody down the road earned it or they followed the lead of one of our speakers and they had the will, they had the trust, they had the life insurance, as Joe said earlier, right? So. If we're not benefiting from that because we weren't privy to that information, then how do we close the gap in wealth? Well, the way we close the gap in wealth is following some information that Mr. Everett said earlier about having a written financial plan, but also to entrepreneurship. Over the last five years, entrepreneurship has taken the lead over creating wealth, which means the playing field has been leveled. We all have an opportunity to be wealthy, but there's no way we're gonna reach and cross that bridge from not having wealth to having wealth if we don't have a solid plan. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about entrepreneurship. So they are known uh, affectionately to my clients as the entrepreneur CFO. So I'm gonna break some things down for you because if I ask you guys to raise your hands now, how many of us have a business? How many of us are self-employed? Now the question is, do you have a business or do you have a hustle? Because they're different. They're different. You can't pass a hustle on to your kids. You can pass a business on to your kids. You can employ your kids with a business. You can't employ your kids with a hustle. So I'm super excited about this tonight because I have my family here. I have my beautiful wife. I have my beautiful mom and dad in the back. I have my daughters right here in the front learning this information. And especially my parents. Because something my dad always taught me was you need to have an A, a B, a C, and a D game plan, right? right? Well, if we learn how to take that hustle and create a business, then we can create some wealth. So check this out. I just made this up here recently. <laughs> Freestyle. <laughs> so if you have a business, there are some things that you need to consider and take in consideration. So I have birth and CD. All right. So what y'all gonna remember after this presentation is birth and CD. B. The budget. If you're gonna create a business, you need to have a budget. Not only a business budget, but a personal budget. Your cash flow is key. Cash is king. So you need to make sure you understand your numbers. So many times I speak to uh, entrepreneurs and I'm like, okay. You know, what's your a profit and loss for the year? Or, 
hey, you know, how much revenue do you need to keep the lights on? Well, how much do you need to retire? Well, Perry, I don't know. Well, if you don't know the numbers, you can't build a plan. So you need to get crystal clear on the numbers. And then a strategy that we use is we help our clients create a, a, a cash management strategy called Profit First. I won't get into that now, but showing entrepreneurs how to take profit on the front end versus the back end. Second thing. Insurance. If you want to leave a legacy, one of the best ways you can leave a legacy is with insurance. You can have a million dollar policy depending on your age and your health for less, for, for 25, 30, 40 bucks a month to kind of depend on your situation. But this is one of the quickest ways to create wealth. I have one of my colleagues in the room right now and we talk about how the Rockefellers do it. How, how they created wealth using trust and life insurance. So that's important too, but you also have to think about your business insurance. Don't be walking around out here reckless in your business and not insured, because they'll come take that business. All right, next we have retirement. So I get it. I've been an entrepreneur for a shoot, almost 20 years now. And a lot of times we're so focused on the now that we're not even thinking about the down the road. Well, you didn't become an entrepreneur, start a business to work the rest of your life. So what's your plan to create that exit strategy so that one, you can be wealthy, right? Because again, how do we measure wealth? By time. If you stop doing what you're doing today, how long will you be to maintain your quality of life, right? So you gotta have a retirement plan. And with business owners, you have access to a ton of retirement plans. Jokingly, we can talk about different whole life products and annuities so you can create a stream of income. I can talk about solo 401ks and, and SEPs and things of that nature. But you have to have a retirement plan strategy. Taxes. So sometimes it's not about how much money you make, it's about how much money you keep. And guess what? If you're in this room today and you don't have a home-based business or something on the side, you're losing. I'll keep it 100 with you. You're losing because the tax laws are written to benefit entrepreneurs. You can be deducting things that you would normally spend money on anyway. If you have a home-based business, you can deduct a portion of your rent, your mortgage, your internet, your cable bill. You can take me out for coffee and deduct 50% of that. I mean, let people, we're leaving money on the table by not really understanding entrepreneurship. You're leaving it on the table. There's our, starting a business could be one of the best cash flow improvement strategies you could do. But guess what? <laughs> if you're a business owner and you get sick, what happened now? No more business. So we got things like disability insurance we gotta think about, right? Oh, and, and oh, hold on, healthcare you get sick, I have my colleague in the room, uh, Sandra Booty, gets my health care together. She's part of my team. So, you know, as you're building your business, right, you got to make sure that you're addressing that. It's one thing, some of those things we don't think about. But if you get sick and you can't work, does the business dry up? Better protect yourself. Last two. Credit and debt. Don't get me started now. That's why I say those things. Right? So cash is, uh, cash is king, but credit is what? Is B still here at credit? You know, when she does her piece, she says cash is king, credit is queen. So you better have some good credit. Guess what? If you want to expand your business, if you want to buy inventory, cover payroll, buy a building, can't be walking around here with jacked up credit. That's, that's part of the game. But not only personal credit, because remember, you're an entrepreneur. You can establish business credit where you can separate your personal from your business. You can have not so savory personal credit, but start building your business credit. That's a strategy as well. And then debt. Sometimes you have to go into debt to, uh, uh, for your business, but we need to make sure we have a plan on how to eliminate it, right? So last thing I'm gonna leave you with is this. Y'all got any questions over this? Birth and CDs, y'all got it? Got Everybody it. said with me, birth, and CDs. CD. All right, last thing right here, FI. If you've been following me, uh, I had the opportunity uh, earlier this year to partner with Damon John. Y'all familiar with Damon John? Yeah. 
food founder of Food Boom, Shark Tank, right? And, with, and had an opportunity to be an ambassador when his book releases. And what Damon said resonated with me in a major way. He said this, entrepreneurs don't need access to capital. I get hit up all the time. Perry, I need money for my business. Perry, I need money for my business. Damon said, that's not what you need because if you got the money, you probably jack it up anyway. What you need is FI, access to financial intelligence. And with the team and the sharp individuals who are assembled in here, you now have access to financial intelligence. Because there's one thing I'll leave you with and then I'll finish. You have opinions, you have information, and you have advice. Everybody got an opinion. And it's not necessarily based on fact. Information, we can go online right now to Google and find some information that's factual. But it may not apply to you. Advice is information coming from a credible source with a history and social proof of getting results with a, a directive to you specifically to your need. Because everybody is different in here, right? That's all I got. My man. Drop the mic, baby. I'm gonna drop the mic. <laughs> Mr. Perry's uh, speech really touched my heart. Number one thing was just that he was clear with the message. And I enjoyed the uh, different things that he had to say, especially about advice being particularly for me and that we are all different. So this speech was great.